Right, hello there ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to uh, another PS4 video we've got for you today. And this one uh, is continuing the White Light of Death theme that we've been uh, looking at over this last um, couple of weeks. Uh, and this one again has been to another repair shop um, who have replaced the HDMI port. Uh, unfortunately that has failed to fix the issue this particular machine has uh, and they've sent it back to its owner claiming that um, the issue is a motherboard fault and it can't be repaired and unfortunately it's sat um, in a cupboard since and not much has happened um, with it since then so that's a bit of a shame and that is something that uh, obviously we don't want um, and that's how it's ended up here because um, rather nicely its owner has said yep yeah, we can have a look at it for them uh, <laughs> So, what we're going to do is, I have just plugged it in, I haven't looked at this machine at all. Uh, monitor is on, it's showing no signal, uh, as I say power and HDMI is in the back. So let's fire this up and see what happens. So, by all accounts, this particular machine, as I say, it shows a white light of death. On a normal boot, fails to show anything, uh, but we'll boot into safe mode. Quite happily, apparently. Um, it seems okay in safe mode, but normally either doesn't show anything or shows lots of nice snow and things on the screen. So we're going to have a look at that. So we've got a white light there now, and got nothing there on the display. The display is flashing in and out, interestingly enough. Now it does have um, a solid red light. There, showing that there is indeed signal, um, but there isn't a lot of anything else, and you can see the no signal jumping in and out. Um, so we definitely do have a signal of sorts going to this monitor, but as you can see, it isn't much of one, uh, and it keeps pulsing in and out. Um, white light, of course, stays on. So we're going to power this machine off. These days I always press and hold them till the second beep because uh, most people do seem to leave them in mess mode. <laughs> okay, so power is momentarily going to go down. So we will put this in safe mode now by pressing and holding the power button for seven seconds and we should hear a second beep. So that's the first beep. Keep it held. There's the second beep, we release our finger. You'll notice it boots a lot quicker this time. And... Okay, not a lot else. So, apparently this thing did boot into safe mode uh, and would show a picture. Um, but on my monitor, doesn't appear that it does. So what we'll do is we will get this thing disassembled and we'll have a look uh, and we'll see what the previous um, repair technicians uh, done to it and hopefully it's not going to be anything too dramatic. Um, wouldn't it be nice to find a decent job for once? Wouldn't it be nice to find somebody who hasn't butchered one? But I'm not holding my breath. Um, so we'll power this machine down. We'll strip it, we'll get the board out, and we'll have a look. So if you bear with me guys, I will see you again in a sec. Right, okay, so we've got the um, motherboard out of that PS4, and uh, the good news is, is that it would appear the previous repair shop are a bunch of lying tour rags, because this port has never been out of this PS4. The port that is installed is the original one, and it hasn't been replaced at all. So, <laughs> so um, we've gone from at least bodging it, uh, to being slightly dishonest and in a way that's uh, that's good because that means I don't have to fix somebody else's mess before I actually start fixing the problem. So we can see um, on the left hand side uh, of the port there you can see the two factory um, flow soldering jobs there on the, on the bottom of the port there with the six little dots around the original pin. Um, and the two fully soldered pins on the right, that's what I would expect to see on a completely stock port. Um, the stock port is of course the original 
Um, the type there and all the pins down the back look really nice and straight. None are lifted. Um, we don't have any problems with any of the pins in there at all. That's all looking really rather nice. So we don't have a problem um, with the port. There are no pins that are sticking out where they shouldn't be. Um, it's all looking really rather nice. Um, but of course we will check that um, because we have seen previously that of course we can get some internal uh, motherboard uh, damage which can prevent uh, the port communicating with the, the HDMI circuit which can of course give us issues with no output. So we're going to check that with this multimeter. Um, so we have the multimeter in continuity mode. That's basically the mode um, which causes the multimeter to beep whenever, whenever the probes are touched together. So what we're going to do is we're going to go through the back of the pins. Um, now then, if you have a look at uh, the HDMI pinout uh, video we did, uh, which gives you the alternate points for the HDMI, we're going to check each pin at the back of this port to its corresponding point out of the board. I'm going to make sure that the port actually has communication and cont um, continuity with the, the actual portion of the circuit it's supposed to do. Um, so basically every time we touch um, one of these points to its appropriate uh, alternate point we should get a beep and a reading of zero or as close to zero as possible on the display anything there which remains as one uh, on your meter it may appear as open uh, ol um, then um, ultimately uh, we've got an issue so hopefully we're going to find that all these talk as they should. So at the first point we're going to go for pin 1. Pin 1 is here. The alternative pin 1 is the fifth little diode back. It's not particularly pretty because the battery is going flat in the multimeter and it sounds a bit wonky. Um, but yeah, that's fine. So the second point in. Uh, pin 2. Two, of course, and we've already seen in a previous video the uh, PS4 repair from hell where this little part of the circuit was burnt. Looking really nice there, though, so that's cool. Pin 3, uh, pin 3 is ground, so pin 3. Pin 3 is good. Pin 4, pin 4 is on this third little. Diode back on the right hand side, that reads good. Uh, pin 5. Pin 5 is this front diode on the right hand side. Perfect. Uh, pin 6. Pin 6 should not be connected, so pin 6 won't read as anything, so we can skip that. Pin 7. Pin 7 goes on the back uh, for pin 7 is the back of this little diode here. That's good. Uh, pin 8. Now then, I have scraped these little vias back with uh, this fiberglass pencil just to expose the copper. Um, let's see if you can see this. So just here, so that is normally covered in green solder mask and that won't give you a reading. You can see there, those are nice and shiny, the copper's showing through, which will allow us to put our little multimeter probes on there and read them off accordingly. So we are on uh, pin 8, I believe. Yeah, pin 8, so pin 8. Goes from here. There we go, so yeah, that does read. Uh, pin 9. Pin 9 is ground. It's fine. Pin 10. It's fine. Pin 11. 
Here's the next one on. Is fine. Pin 12 should be ground, which it is. Pin 13 is fine. Pin 14. Is ground pin fifteen so pin fifteen Fifteen is ground, pin sixteen. Pin seventeen. Is good. Pin eighteen is ground. And pin nineteen is this final via. Okay, so those are all beeping out really rather nicely, which shows we've got continuity between the various points on the board um, and the HDMI port. Um, so from that point of view, that is good. Um, so what we will do now is we will flip this board over and we will have a look behind this little plate here. Uh, and that uh, is basically where HDMI encoder IC and the various video filters and things live uh, and we'll have a look behind there and we'll see if we can find a problem behind there which might explain why we're getting no video output to our PS4 so uh, bear with me guys and we'll uh, get the hot air station out and we'll uh, crack that plate off and we'll have a look behind okay so that is where our HDMI encoder IC lives just underneath that plate there So, we're going to get the air stuff. Bloody hell. So we're going to get the air station out. I'm going to set this to a temperature of 485 degrees at 65 litres per minute air flow. We've got the widest of the three nozzles supplied with the quick attached. And we're going to start at this bottom corner. And basically, we're just going to warm this metal plate up. because this metal plate has some rather nice meaty connections to ground here and all across the back um, that's going to basically cause this plate to act as a massive heat sink so it's going to try and draw away as much of the air as possible so that is why we've got this set on a really rather high temperature with a decent amount of airflow uh, because of course we want to saturate this with heat so that it um, reduces the amount it can draw away causes the heat to build up and will enable us to remove this plate a lot more uh, easily and a lot quicker than we would otherwise be able to do. Now you do need to be careful because there are some very small surface mount components underneath this plate which can very easily be blown away and not loose um, so if you're not quite so confident with this either knock the airflow down a tiny tad or use a smaller nozzle. As I say we are using the biggest of the three um, sort of circular nozzles supplied with the quick so the plate should be nice and warm now so we're just going to start to focus on the corners this can be a bit awkward <sighs>
Okay, that's one side loose. Second side is loose. Turn it around a bit further again. The only thing I will say, and I do love this new air station of mine, but the hose on the end is not the longest. Okay, that's that side up. Turn it round now so we're facing the back. loose and finally you have the side along the back there so we've got three sides of this now three Is that so nice and easy, nice and quick? The plate there is in really nice shape, no damage at all there, so that of course will be refitted. I'll just pop that out of the way for now, and that will enable us to take a look now at our HDMI encoder IC and the various bits and pieces of that circuit. So we can see you now, we have our four video filters just here. Um, those basically connect directly to these traces which go through these vias, which go to the vias on the top side of the board, uh, and then out to our HDMI port. So the way to think of traces really, I, I like the best analogy I can think of is, think of the various components of your circuit as rooms. So say the HDMI IC is your kitchen for example. Uh, and think of the, the traces, so that's the little copper pathways in the board which link the components together. Those are these little lines you can see. Think of those as corridors or hallways between the various rooms. Um, the way to think of vias uh, is like a staircase, so they go between the various different layers of the board, up and down, uh, and carry the signals between the various layers. So, in our case, you know, say the HDMI IC is our kitchen, the filters are our living room, and the HDMI port on the back of the board here is our upstairs bedroom, for example. So we come in the front door, um, through the kitchen, down the hallway, to the living room, down the hallway and up the stairs, which is of course where the vias are, uh, up the stairs, and then along the landing, so across these little traces here, to our upstairs bedroom, which is our HDMI port. And basically that's the way the circuit works. So that's a nice little analogy there to help you understand sort of how this thing sort of works, if you like. So at a very, very basic level. <laughs> so we've got our multimeter again here. And basically these video filters are essentially a big um, piece of copper wire, which is twisted together. Uh, and there are two in each one. Uh, and basically it goes for, uh, there's uh, a coil uh, between the top left and bottom left and the top right and bottom right. Um, so basically if these are good, uh, they, these connect directly to these pins here on the back of our HDMI encoder IC. So basically what we should be able to do to test that these coils are good is go from the bottom corner here and it's pin 3, 4, it's pin 5. As we can see, we get a beep, so we do have continuity between there. So that side's good. We will test the second, so the right-hand side on this first filter. It's pin six. 
Okay, so we have continuity there, which shows us that our uh, connection between our pin 5 and pin 6 of our HDMI encoder IC and the back side here of our filter is good. So that filter tell, so that tells us basically that this first filter here is in good shape. We are going to repeat this process with the second filter. Second filter is good. That's pins 8 and 9. Pins 11 and 12. And pins 14 and 15. Perfect. So basically, we do indeed have continuity between our HDMI encoder IC and the back sides of these four uh, video filters, which tells us that our video filters are indeed in good shape and we do have continuity between that portion of the circuit which is great um, so we can rule out the filters as our problem uh, the next step we need to uh, we need to perform is to ensure that we actually have continuity between the same legs of this HDMI encoder IC and the top side of the board because it is indeed possible <coughs> for either these little traces here from the back side of the filters to be burned or as more likely the actual vias themselves may be damaged or burned so if we get communication top side then we know that we've already verified of course when we check the alternate uh, points of the HDMI uh, that the vias top side to the port are good so we actually need to test now that the signal is actually getting through to the top side of the board. If that tests out okay, and looking around at these various uh, little capacitors and resistors and things like that here, those all look good. I can't see any that look burnt or dull or nasty, so those should be good. So basically, if we get continuity um, from our next test, um, so that is from the actual leg of the HDMI encoder I see to the top side vias here then basically we are going to be looking at replacing this little chip just here so basically what we're going to do and this might make it a bit difficult on camera so I apologize you might not be able to see much of this um, however um, you will be able to hear it so we're going to go from um, the basically there are eight pins so we're going from the we know the connection between the HDMI encoder IC and the bottom of these uh, little filters here are good so we're going to go from the bottom legs of the filters so we're going to go from these eight points here so one probe black probe is going to sit on the first point here through to the Vias here on the top side, so the first via, and then so on and so forth, back and forth across the board uh, on our way to those connections. And if we are good, then we are going to look at replacing our HDMI encoder IC because it looks like that may be the problem if we get continuity here. If we don't get continuity on one of these points, it shows we have an issue with a trace or a via, uh, and then we're going to have to run link wires. Um, so let's check that. So, I'm going to just borrow my multimeter here to enable me to stand up the board a bit easier and free me a hand up. Um, so, we're going from pin from the uh, first uh, filter on the left hand side, so the first pin through to the first pin on the top side, and we can see we get a beep, which is good. So, pin two. So the right hand side of the first output um, filter through to the second via on the left as you look at the back side of the port. We get a beep, so that's good. So the left hand side of the second filter through to the third via. The 
this will be so much easier when I've actually got a pair of proper multimeter probes. As you can see there, we get a beep, so that's good. The right hand side of that second filter through to the fourth via. Feeds perfect. Left hand side of the third filter through to the fifth via. Feeds good. The right hand side of the third to the sixth. And that's good. The left hand side of the fourth filter to the seventh via top side of the board is good. And eighth, uh, so the final, the right hand side of the fourth filter to the eighth via top side of the board gives us a perfect reading. So basically, uh, the connections across our filters to our HDMI encoder IC and therefore the actual HDMI port itself are good. Okay then, so just to recap, because um, the, uh, the video reached its 15 minute recording limit there on the camera. Um, so just to recap, we have tested uh, the continuity between the actual pins of the HDMI port uh, and the uh, circuit uh, by measuring to the alternate points. Um, and those all metered out good, which tells us that we have good connection between the circuit and our HDMI port. We verified that our HDMI port is good. We have no bent or missing pins or anything of that nature, and so that is all good. We have checked and verified that our HDMI um, encoder IC output filters are in good shape. We've verified that the connectivity across those filters um, to the HDMI IC is good, and also the connection from the HDMI IC to the top side of the board uh, through the vias is also good, which basically means as far as the circuit physically goes, it's in good shape. So what that does point to is that we have an issue with our actual HDMI encoder IC itself. And because we've got an issue with that HDMI encoder IC itself, we are going to look to remove it and replace it with a known good part. So in order to do that, um, we are going to, once again, get our trusty heat gun and we're going to add a little bit of flux to this HDMI encoder IC. We are also going to add a little bit of fume extraction, so this might get noisy for a sec. We're going to add a drop of flux. So the legs don't be shy because like I say any excess we are going to clean off anyway. Do just be mindful of these little resistors and things at the back of the, of the chip because they are rather easy to blow away and dislodge if you give them a bit too much air and a bit too much heat. So we're going to go for a temperature of 485 degrees at 50 litres of air. Uh, per minute as a, a measure of airflow. And um, we're just going to gently heat the board. And the chip. We're just going to work the heat for a while here and the key is not to get anything too hot too quickly. 
want to let the heat saturate the component in the board. I'm just going to gently lift So we have removed the old IC. As you can see, that's come away nice and cleanly. So nice and straight and The pads on our board look good, there's none that are lifted, no damage there at all, which is nice. All our little resistors and capacitors and things like that are all still in place. So we're just going to add a drop more flux to this board. Like that. As I say, you know, don't be shy. Don't be shy with regards to adding flux because any excess you can easily get rid of. Okay, so we have our solving iron just here. going to remove the old solder with the um, tiny little bit of desoldering braid. I'm being honest I'm being a little bit lazy here and uh, not using the ideal tip for this. Yeah, you know what you're going to do. So, what I'm going to do now is just get a little bit of leaded solder. Just run that along the, uh, the pads. Of course, the flux that's on there is going to encourage solder to flow from the iron.
and there we go so that was a nicely uh, tinned up there now what we'll do now is we'll get a drop of isopropyl alcohol or IPA I'm just going to go over the uh, the area we've worked on there with a little bit of IPA. Just keeps it clean, clean and tidy. We're not going to worry too much about any sort of residue or anything like that because, of course, before we uh, reassemble this unit, once we fixed it, we will, of course, go over this board and do a proper thorough cleaning to remove any sort of traces of uh, really horrible flux residue and that sort of nature um, but for now where all we're interested in is just sort of keeping our chips out nice and tidy that will do so what we'll do is we will get a replacement uh, IC out and then we'll look at uh, replacing that on the board so bear with me guys and I'll see you again in a sec all right okay so we have our nice new shiny uh, Panasonic HDMI encoder IC just here uh, which we've removed from a donor board uh, as I say we have our site all nicely cleaned up there so what we're going to do If you've watched a few of these videos by now, you should probably have half an idea what I'm going to say. We are going to add a touch of flux to our nicely uh, tinned points there. Once we're happy we have those in position, we're just going to go and drop the IC loosely into place. Now the more observant amongst you might have noticed we have a nice new light above this desk. That's one I've nicked downstairs from my, uh, <laughs> from my actual work desk. Um, but what can you do? We're desperate for some light. So these can be a little bit of a pain to align up properly, but you do want to get them as close as you can. I apologise if I block your view momentarily for this one, but... Needs must and all that, because it is a rather fiddly job.
once you think you've got it somewhere I like, just tack one leg. That will give you enough freedom there just to line. A leg up in the opposite corner. And then once you think you've got it, it's just a case of going around the chip and touching each leg with the iron and that will encourage your solder to draw from the board up the leg and create a nice solid connection between the chip and the board. So we're just going to go away and do that now and I will join you in a sec guys once we've finished. Right, okay, so we've been around the edge um, of our HDMI encoder IC chip now um, with the soldering iron and we've touched up each leg. Uh, we've also um, checked the uh, adjacent pins um, for any shorts uh, using the multimeter in continuity mode and it's all come back good. So this chip, providing the chip is good. As I say, it was lifted off a donor parts board that we, uh, that we have. Um, so this thing basically now <coughs> should be good to go. So what we're going to do is we are going to fire this up, pop it back in its chassis, uh, yeah, we're going to fire it up and we're going to see if we get any output to our display. Hopefully we will, um, and in the event we do, we can replace the metal shield after we've given everything a really good clean up um, with some alcohol, um, and uh, and then we can get this thing back to uh, to gaming once more. So uh, join me in a moment and we'll hook it up to the monitor and we'll see what we get. Right, okay, so we have our PlayStation all plugged back in there, and... We've got the monitor on, as you can see there's no signal at the moment, the PlayStation is switched off, uh, so we're going to switch it on here. The light is flashing away, PlayStation logo. Nice white light there. It's on computer entertainment. There we go. So, ladies and gentlemen, as you can see, that is indeed how you diagnose a faulty um, Panasonic MN series um, encoder IC chip on a PlayStation 4. Um, just to recap, there what we did is we went through and we tested the uh, the actual port. Uh, we visually checked it um, for any bad pins, um, the plug didn't have any excessive play in it. We opened it up, we metered the uh, actual connection pins from the back of the HDMI port through to the alternate points uh, as we detailed in another video on this channel uh, for the alternate HDMI pinout. Um, those came back and tested OK which told us our physical connection between the circuit and our HDMI port was good. We then removed the bottom shielding around the uh, Panasonic MN Series control, uh, encoder IC uh, and we tested the video filters and um, those all came back and tested absolutely fine. Um, and we then checked the physical connection um, from our HDMI encoder IC to the bottom side of those filters to ensure that the coils inside those filters were in good condition and they were. And then finally we checked the connections between um, the HDMI encoder IC and the VS top side of the board to make sure the signal was indeed getting through and that was all okay. The various little resistors and capacitors and things, um, the little tiny surface mount things around the IC look good. Um, they didn't seem to have a problem so we replaced the IC and lo and behold we now have a nice picture on our PlayStation 4 in full 1080p glory and without any dodgy artifacting or anything of that nature. It all looks really rather beautiful. 
uh, hopefully you can see that so it does look like this was initialized um, at some point by its um, previous owner shall we say because um, it's just going through the initial setup there um, okay so yeah it's all looking really rather nice and as we can see there now it's all in there and we can see the various bits and pieces that have been uh, left on this PlayStation so it all looks really rather lovely and um, I think we can call it fixed so um, I will see you on the next vid boys and girls um, just as an aside um, I'd like to take this opportunity to thank everybody because we've hit another milestone of course we are over 7,000 channel views now uh, and we've just ticked over the 100 subscribers uh, as well so much much thanks goes out to all of you who have um, taken the time out to either comment or send me a message um, or as I say you know if you have subscribed to the channel then as I say I owe you a massive thank you um, like I said boys and girls we will keep the content coming um, I hope to have a couple uh, of different consoles coming in fairly shortly um, some uh, Xbox Ones and some PS3s and Xbox 360s and things of that nature that we can have a look at as well um, so as I say hopefully in the not too distant future those things are going to be showing up uh, and we can uh, you know can have a change of flavour because as much as I love looking at these PS4s with you guys and I'm sure you'll have seen them um, it would be nice to have a look at a couple of other bits and pieces as well um, so as I say boys and girls much appreciated if you've been taking the time out to uh, contribute um, and as I say I hope this has proved useful um, to more than one of you uh, out there um, so as I say boys and girls I will see you on the next video please continue to comment rate and subscribe it does make me feel like I'm doing something really worthwhile with this channel um, and I hope that you are getting uh, as much out of it as I'm getting actually doing these things for you so uh, as I say I'll see you on the next one and it's goodbye from me and uh, remember to play safe out there cheers guys bye bye